Ki Bergdale Tamaki Makaro, ko Ben Jones toka ingo, um, he kai Rangau Hua iti fara Tamaki Makaro he mi he mi arha. Just want to say thank you for having me today. Um, it's great to be able to talk today and be a part of this event. Um, when um, Alan emailed me and asked me about some of the work that I'm doing, this is kind of the work outside of my PhD. Um, when I've been working as a consultant archaeologist in New Zealand. And I came off the title Peering into the Past. Um, and the talk of this is just using kind of open source LiDAR, um, different algorithms to find a bit and explore New Zealand's or Aotearoa's fantastic um, heritage. So quite often I get asked, does New Zealand have um, archaeologists or archaeology? And quite often people think about Indiana Jones. But what's quite fantastic about LiDAR is that you get these fantastic what we call past sites or villages where these hills have been sculpted and we have defensive ditches, terraces, and you have a park complex about um, 11 hectares. Quite often when people think about fantastic lighter, they think about South America and they think about these big complexes. And for example, you've got 56 hectares there. So just a bit of a comparison. So mostly focusing on Northland, the problem is when you use this lighter data set, there's a lot of archaeology in this region, but as you can see, a lot of it is forested with different uh, vegetation types. This is what's great about LiDAR is you can peel that vegetation away and you can look at large areas that are not easily accessible to look for these sites or remnants of the past. And instead of surveying all this, which would be quite manual and intensive, we're trying to use machine learning to scale this reach regionally to kind of narrow in where we want to do survey in the future. Uh, so yes, yeah, there's a bit of a video. Doesn't seem to be working. So I go back and forward. Basically, it was going to be an animation of this. What the workflow is basically doing is that we're trying to look at a landscape level. We're trying to get a machine learning algorithm to look at an area of interest where we load all the different geospatial data, so where we know known sites are. Then we want the LiDAR to pick up different sites or area of interest, um, identify it, process that geospatial data to see how accurate it is. And then we're kind of going into this area where you're trying to get these features to reconstruct it to lead to more final site reconstructions or more heritage scale reconstructions. What's great about LiDAR as well is that when we go back and we look at the geospatial data, we can see that point has a site record which has the site plan, and we use that to look at where the site would be. And as you can see from the coordinates, there's quite a bit of um, offset. So this is where the site's been recorded, and with that LiDAR we can narrow it down. And this is great as well when we create training samples for the machine learning data. What we've been using mostly is um, mask RCN, and so essentially what's happening is we're cookie cutting or giving it past sites that we know about from the LiDAR, and then it's search for it. And so you can see it's, it's training on it and then validating, and it's running about 300 batches. And what's interesting is that it's kind of subsetting the past. We know this is roughly what it should be finding, as you can see the terracing and the defensive ditch based on like a composite of different machine learning um, and LiDAR visualizations. And so it's getting better. And so 80% validation, that's probably a bit high as because what we've noticed is that it's also picking up a lot of road cuts or things that are not past sites, but it's kind of a good start in that respect. And essentially we're finding new sites based on this method. Um, what we've noticed as well is that some of the LiDAR in places is a bit patchy as well. You can see that fractaling happening there. But overall, it's picking up these sites under vegetation, and then we're also using historical maps to refine that process as well. Um, for example, there was a geologist, 1920, Hartley Farrar, and he actually recorded a lot of the past sites on his geological maps as well. So it's interesting bringing in that historical data as well. And what's quite exciting about LiDAR is that it's not just for site um, recording and finding future sites, there's a lot of um, collaboration. So for archaeologists, Tuhua or Mayor Island is a source of great interest because a lot of the obsidian or stone tools come from this area, but also it's quite interesting for geologists. So it's quite interesting to see that 
the same LIDAR data set has applications not just for archaeologists but other disciplines as well. What I've noticed as well, if you look at the LIDAR or even the terrestrial stuff, you end up recording um, marine heritage as well. So interesting enough, those two points there, are, um, it's recorded a bit of a wreck up in Northland, just in the point cloud. So it's recording maritime heritage as well. What's useful as well is heritage reconstruction. We can use this base LIDAR as a layer to kind of reconstruct. This is an old military readout, um, a British readout at um, Queen's Readout in South Auckland. You can see only a little bit of it remains, but having that information, the LIDAR allows us to do reconstruct that and use it for visual interpretation as well. It's quite useful for risk identification. I've just used an example here of landslides, but further up here there's another site that's recorded, so it's quite good to know the risk around that site. And then also looking at the point cloud to see if these archaeological features show up, it's quite good to query it as well. Um, lastly, I'll just talk about, I'm not sure about my time, but I'll just talk about what I'm doing for my PhD. Um, a big problem in New Zealand is a lot of our sites are coastal. It's around the coast of the show of the hexagon map. A lot of the sites are getting eroded um, just to current erosion and it'll probably worsen due to sea level rise. So you can see there's just um, a midden. Midden's a bit of a library of um, past information, but it's basically food refuge. But if you can get a good radiocarbon date, you can figure out how old that site is and understand what the environment's been like. Um, using different geospatial data sets at a national, regional and local scale, we can understand which sites are being eroded or which will be inundated using historical shoreline um, data sets from historical imagery. We can understand patterns of erosion and accretion and all these different geospatial tools, hopefully all of it open source, so open source wave data, um, LIDAR, um, bathymetric data, we can come up with assessments to protect and preserve these sites before they're lost. Thank you for listening to me th today. It was my very short talk. Look forward to meeting you and talking to you. And I just want to acknowledge um, these different um, people who helped me with my research and also people finding me to do my research as well. Cheers. Thank you.